North Korean leader Kim Jong-un reminded his troops to treat South Korea as a hostile foreign enemy and insisted that the North wouldn't hesitate to attack its rival if the South infringes upon its sovereignty, state media said Friday. Kim's comments at an army headquarters came after North Korea this week confirmed that it revised its constitution to define South Korea as a hostile state and blew up frontline road and rail links that were once connected to the South. The steps punctuated Kim's calls for North Korea to abandon its long-standing goals of reconciling with the South and reflect his intent to escalate tensions and increase leverage amid a deepening stalemate in diplomacy. Analysts see increasing risks of possible clashes along the rival's tense border areas, although it would be highly unlikely for the North to contemplate full-scale attacks in the face of superior U.S. and South Korean forces. During a visit to the headquarters of the North Korean People's Army's 2nd Corps on Thursday, Kim stressed to troops the importance of understanding that any use of offensive force against the South would constitute a legitimate retaliatory action against the hostile country, not the fellow countrymen. He said the North's detonation of the border road and rail sections on Tuesday demonstrated the North's resolve to cut off persistent, evil, relations with the South, which lasted century after century and the complete removal of the useless awareness about fellow countrymen and unreasonable idea of reunification. He said the event was also a declaration that his troops wouldn't hesitate to use physical force against the South, an apparent hostile country, if it violates North Korea's sovereignty, the North's official Korean Central News Agency said. South Korea had no immediate comment on Kim's remarks. North Korea has been making increasingly provocative threats against rival South Korea in recent weeks, including accusing the South of infiltrating drones to drop anti-North Korean propaganda leaflets over Pyongyang this month and threatening to attack if it happens again. South Korea has refused to confirm whether it sent drones but warned that North Korea will face an overwhelming response that would end its regime if the safety of South Korean citizens is threatened. Tensions on the Korean peninsula have spiked since 2022, as Kim used Russia's war on Ukraine as a window to dial up his weapons testing activities and threats. Washington, Seoul and Tokyo have strengthened their combined military exercises in response and took steps to sharpen their nuclear deterrence strategies built around strategic U.S. assets. Australia will give 49 of its aging M1A1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine months after Kiev requested the redundant fleet, Defence Minister Richard Murleys said Thursday. The fleet of US-made M1A1 tanks are valued at $245 million Australian dollars, he said. They will be replaced in Australia by a next-generation M1A2 fleet. Murleys had said in February that giving Ukraine the tanks as they were phased out was not on his government's agenda. Murley said on Thursday he did not regard the donation as a backflip.
We talk with the Ukrainian government consistently around how best we can support them, Merlis told Australian Broadcasting Corporation Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, Vassil Myroshnikenko, did not comment on opposition lawmakers' criticisms that the tanks should have been donated earlier. This is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit-for-purpose announcement, Myroshnikenko said. The tanks bring the total value of Australia's military assistance to Ukraine since the start of the Russian invasion in 2023 to over 1.3 billion Australian dollars. This is a very significant contribution. It's $245 million worth of uh, defence material, 49 Abrams tanks. This is going to significantly boost the mobile fire capability of uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. We, we talk with uh, the Ukrainian government uh, consistently around how best we can support them. They, for example, were seeking integrated air and missile defence, and, and that has been a feature of the packages that we've announced this year. Um, you know, I announced a package of $250 million worth of support in July when I was at NATO, $100 million when I was in Ukraine earlier in the year. Uh, we, we, we look at uh, the material that we have, uh, it, its effectiveness, how the, the shape that it's in, to be frank, um, how, whether it would be able to make a difference, whether it can be sustained and maintained so that it can be kept in the fight. And the Abrams tanks you know, fit all of those criteria, and we're really pleased that we're in a position to be able to give them to Ukraine. I think the point to make here is that uh, there is a lot at stake, obviously for Ukraine, but for the world. I mean, Ukraine is fighting for its own country, but in so many ways, Ukraine is really on the front line of fighting for the global rules-based order, uh, which stands in the interests of uh, certainly Australia, but countries around the world. I mean, we cannot allow to stand the idea that a large country can invade a smaller na neighbour, not by reference to international law, but by reference to power and might. Uh, and so we stand with the international community in terms of supporting Ukraine, and we will continue to do that. Uh, this is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit for purpose uh, announcement. Uh, as you know, tanks are an essential part of the land defenses and the front line currently is extending over a thousand kilometers long. So those tanks will be there uh, to help us defend ourselves and they will be saving many lives. So that's, that's a significant contribution to our defense. We respect the decision of the government. It was not an easy one, and I'm very happy that it was a positive one. And uh, Ukrainians are very grateful. We'll never forget Australian support. This, uh, the tanks will contribute to, to the further deterrent, but mostly we, we still need to achieve the end of this war. But uh, definitely we need those tanks now. Uh, our soldiers have been already trained uh, using some of those tanks, which were provided earlier by the US government. And uh, it will be a serious contribution to our military capability.